Thanks for staying up late and let us entertain you. We are staying up late. Why? Because it's the New Mexico Chevy Dealers Football Friday Night Football Show. You want to know what's on the show tonight? How about the Spirit Stick? That's always here every week. Then a football power pole. And, of course, you also participate. Highlight from you, the viewer. But as always, we start with our game of the week. District football in full effect. We start with the top-ranked team in the state, La Cueva, playing guests to the Sandia Matadors and Super District 25A. Matadors get the ball first on the opening kickoff, taking it all the way to the 50-yard line, giving the Matadors good field position for their first drive. However, running back James Moorhead will get the handoff and can't squeeze it. La Cueva there to recover the fumble. And you know who's coming now, the cartoon. LaQueva running back Ronnie Daniels needed only 38 yards to break the all-time high school rushing record. Daniels does it on the Bears' first drive on this carry. He's presented the game ball for his record-breaking season. Then it's time to get back to the action. LaQueva six yards out now, and it's the other senior, Stan Sedberry, getting in for the score, putting the Bears up 7 to nothing. Sandia will get their own scoring drive going. And and have to settle for three. Why? Because the Bears applying the pressure on the line. Gets through and block the field goal. Then the Bears strike quarterback Mike Walsh to Stan Sedberry for the 80-yard touchdown. 14 to nothing. Bears. We go to the start of the second quarter now. McQuaid on the attack again. This time it's quarterback Zach Nelson dropping back. And what do you know? Stan Sedberry. Coming down with the touchdown grab for his third touchdown of the night. 21 nothing. LaQueva. Bears on the attack again. Only 40 seconds left to play in the half. And Nelson tries to go to Ronnie Daniels, who was silent for most part of the half. And Mike Matsko comes up with the interception. Matsko looks like he has a pick six, but he's dragged down. And Sandia tries to put up points before the half ends. Sandia quarterback Aaron Smith taking it himself. But Smith makes some Bears defenders miss, showing off the spin move before finally being brought down close to the goal line. Smith with a quick snap with limited time in his... Cole Liggins, who would come in and get the touchdown pass, touchdown play, that is. Finally putting the Matadors on the board. 21-7 at that point. But the Bears hold on, and they hold on big. 54-6, Quavo, the final. District 1-5 is represented as the 7th-ranked Cleveland Storm and 12th-ranked Cibola Cougars Clash and Rio Rancho. Storm starting the night with a better record. Only one defeat. Cole Gauchi rolls out and throws it deep to Chris Petro for the first down. Then it's Gauchi handing off to Thomas Knox, tying the game at seven each. Fans getting into it and Siebel are trying to get something going. Mike Kazemchak drops back and passes to Mark Tapia for the short game. But the drive would end. And that's a big fella, Mr. Tapia is. It was a Cleveland defense that kept him in this game. Kazimchek looking down the field, but James Beasley in his face, serving up the sack lunch. And it didn't taste good if you're on the end of that. Kirk Potter, the coach, watching and liking this. Cole Gauchy, time to throw and find Travis Langeren for the huge game. Setting up that first down. And a few plays later. Gauchi would come on and do his work. Hooking up with Langerin in the end zone. 14-7 storm. Cleveland having their way at this point. Storm decided to bring the storm. Siebler will muff the punt and Cleveland's ball fast forward now. Siebler, Mike Zimczyk trying to hard to get his team back in the game after the punt. But it would be Chris Petro to say no and come up with the interception. Right there. That would put the Cleveland defense, the Cleveland offense back on the field where Cole Gauchi would make sure he put the game away, calling his own number, getting it into the end zone. 21 to 7 at that point, the Storm finally win the game. 21 to 7. We did a few things in the first half that, that just weren't working out for us, and then uh, we made some adjustments at halftime and then came back out and just played better offensive football. We were stellar defensively all night. Staying in District 158, it's the Rio Rancho Ramps hosting the Volcano Vista Hawks. 
Point toss is always nice. It's always good to, when you run out on the field. Volcano Vista doing the honors there, and their quarterback, Kyle Byer, pitches to Andrew V. Hill, but he can't. The hookup with the fumble, the ball would be recovered, and the drive would end. Play in progress. Rams Tim Foley on the punt, return would bust it out to the far sideline and take it to the house. 7 0 Rams. The hometown folk loving that. Ox Kyle Byer gives her Roman Pierre Ferreira for the halfback pass and connects with Mitchell Casey for the first down. Volcano driving. Same drive, and Byer hands off to Andre V. Hill. He runs up the gut. Hawks tie the game at seven. We got ourselves a ball game. Ryan Pickowitz for the Rams, looking for Connor Brown, but instead finds Ramon Perea for the interception. And Volcano Vista trying to go back on top. Second quarter starts. The Hawks on third down and fired, looking to pass. Ganged up by the Rams defense. Rams also got in the end zone more tonight by a touch. 21 to 14. Rio Rancho is the final. There are only three teams in District 4 5A, so losing is not an option when district play starts. The Hobbs Eagles trying to leave 11th ranked Clovis with a W. Wildcats going to have something to say about that at Leon Williams Stadium. And Trey Orozco. Have something to say about it right now. How about this for some fancy running? Trey trying to break it out and go all the way to the end zone. But the Hobbs Eagles will fly down and bring them down. Next, Jordan Hill calling his own number. Nice little quarterback keeper around the end. Jordan making some positive yardage as the Wildcats drive continues for the hometown. Then Orozco looks so good on the kickoff. Gets it again, and he's busted loose. Will he be caught? Uh... No. Roscoe with the touchdown. Then Ron Revis calls his name. Gets the Clovis touchdown, making it 21 to nothing. Clovis, they went big. 54 to 14. Wildcats getting it done. West Mason trying to stay near the top of District 558 at the Valley Vikings. Vikings going for it on. Fourth and one at the one. Jerry Goodyear had bad handles and didn't get it done. West Mason would take over. Matthew Harmeal making a pay to Daniel Salazar for an 85-yard touchdown. PAT would fail, but West Mesa had the lead. Six to nothing at that point. And if he's on, on your side, so you have to go to a three, then you come down to a one. Unless there's two tight ends, we don't have to be 33. That's the way to explain it, Coach. Teammates happy about that, too. Vikings getting ready to strike back in the first. Jerry Goodyear hanging on and hanging in the end zone from nine out. Seven to six, Valley, because their PAT was good. Congratulations for the QB. But more West Mesa. Harmio carving up Thanksgiving Day turkey to Christopher Klein. 56 yards for the touch. West Mesa goes for two and gets it for a 14 to six advantage. Valley would answer. Field goal, 19 yards out, it's 14 to 10. Daniel Jaramillo, Matthew Jaramillo, looking up, finding Daniel Salazar in the second quarter, 23 yards. They go for two and make it 22 to 10. West Mesa, West Mesa goes on to win it, 48 to 23. Eighth-ranked Mayfield Trojans at the Gaston Panthers, and look at that. Just like that, Mayfield into the end zone quickly and often. Brandon Betancourt hearing his name called and getting it done, and then... Here comes the touchdown pass. Clawson in the end zone and making it work. Mayfield rolling. More Mayfield now. Same touchdown pass because we want to show you to you again. <laughs> Mayfield wins it. 55 to 13 is the final. You like seeing it again, right? Our own version of instant replay. It's time to reload on the refreshments as we do the same with our highlights. The Chevy Dealers New Mexico.com Football Friday show has plenty more on the way. Plus, we're getting flooded with pictures from you, the viewer. Those are on the way after we take a water break. And rivals Goddard and Artesia have their annual epic battle royale on a football field. Highlights coming when we come back.